Hi everyone. Uh, so yep, hello. I'm I'm Connor Chaplin. Uh, I'm an innovation officer at Transport for Greater Manchester, um, which uh, sits within our Transport Strategy Directorate. Uh, and I just quite briefly want to go over um, some context, I think, for the e-scooter trials, um, and give a little bit of background as well to the the research that the Healthy Active Cities team um, have, have put together. We're presenting today. Um, so some background to how these trials came about in the first place. They were originally planned for uh, the four future transport zones designated by the Department of Transport, um, and they were expected to launch this year in 2021. However, with the pandemic, uh, the trials brought forward uh, to last year in the summer, um, seen as part of the green recovery um, and offering a naturally socially distanced way to, for people to get about as well. Um, so fortunately, we, we do have some of these trials in Greater Manchester. We have trial in Rochdale and a trial in Salford. Um, they're both initially 12 months. Salford started in October, Rochdale started um, in April, just gone. And from CFGM's point of view, as, as the strategic transport body in the region, um, the big potential we see for them and the reason we're so interested in them is the first and last mile. Um, it supports a number of strategic objectives for us um, from our transport strategy, which I'll touch on in just a moment, uh, but overall that they seem like a great way to enhance intermodal connectivity, uh, particularly for the first last mile journeys to and from uh, public transport hubs. Just touching on how the trials themselves uh, work, they're both operated by Lime, which is one of the largest uh, and most experienced operators. It is the largest uh, micro mobility operator in the UK now. And there's a number of safety features in place. So, for example, uh, users have to have a provisional driving license and be over 18. This is verified via the app. Uh, we have geofencing, which is essentially uh, GPS on board the scooters, which uh, controls where they can and can't go and how fast they can go. Um, and then we have also worked quite closely with um, some key stakeholders. So obviously Salford Council, Rochdale Council are involved um, with Lime and TFGM to, to get teams set up and make them safe. And we've also been engaging with um, site loss groups, Greater Manchester Police, local councillors uh, and other local uh, bodies as well. So the Transport Strategy 2040 is um, our award-winning um, transport strategy for the region um, over the next 20 years or so. And the, the overarching principle is to create an integrated transport uh, system which, as it says there in the graphic on the left, uh, creates world-class connections that support long-term sustainable economic growth and access to opportunity for all. Um, and that has four key uh, principles behind it with relation to the, to the growth, uh, the environment, uh, being innovative in the city region, uh, which I think we're every day getting better and better, and ultimately improving quality of, of life for all. Um, over that period, we expect quite considerable change in the region. Um, there'll be significant increase in population. There'll be uh, an increase in the, the economy as well. And the result of that is by 2040, we expect there to be around a 10% increase in trips made every day in the region to about 6.8 million. Uh, and one of our key objectives, which is set out in the strategy, is that that increase in demand will be met with no net increase in the use of cars for these trips. Um, and that's what we call the right mix vision, which is essentially a 50-50 split between cars and public transport active travel uh, by 2040. And what that means is we need to uh, provide or uh, yeah, meet demand for one million more sustainable trips um, per day, which is obviously quite a significant challenge. 30% of trips in Greater Manchester at the minute under one kilometre are still made by car. Um, so a big focus for us in reaching these targets is the shorter first and last mile trips. And as mentioned before, I think this is we see, uh, where we see potentially the greatest potential um, for e-scooters as another piece in the puzzle to address that problem. Uh, this is another key strategy we have, our network. Uh, you may have seen this before, um, presented by the Mayor, Andy Burnham. Uh, sometimes affectionately referred to as the Death Star. Um, this is a 10-year a vision um, for the network up to 2029. And, and the purpose of it is to demonstrate how all the different modes, Metrolink, bus, rail, um, we've got plans for tram train, cycling, all that kind of thing can fit together in Greater Manchester to create that fully integrated network. And across all of this, uh, you might be able to see there's a, a blue hexagon, and that represents our walking and cycling. 
um, infrastructure. So we're putting together the, the UK's largest walking and cycling network. Um, and a focus of that is, as I mentioned, the first and last mile journeys and e-scooters perhaps are another piece in that puzzle to, to address that problem. So again, that's just to um, illustrate where we think that the greatest potential for e-scooters might be in replacing as many shorter car trips as possible. So on the trials themselves in Greater Manchester, uh, on the left there, we have the Salford Trial Zone that launched uh, 26th of October last year, initially um, on the University of Salford Peel Park campus. And then in February this year, it expanded uh, to create a link route to Media City UK down at the Keys. Uh, and that's the area in dark green. And then um, in about six weeks ago in April, uh, we expanded it quite significantly um, to cover up the, the majority of the, the Salford um, city zone uh, to the east that comes to the, the Manchester border. Um, and then in Rochdale, uh, you can see uh, that's currently covering the town centre um, and that launched on April of this year. So that, that will phase up as well, similarly to the Salford programme, um, just making sure that we're slowly ramping things up to, to keep it manageable, make sure we have time to address any issues that come up um, and, and being sensitive to, to the local area as well. Um, both of these trials initially scheduled for 12 months. Um, Salford in particular uh, started in October, so that would take us up to October this year. However, DFT have now said that they will extend trials to March, end of March next year. Um, so we, we will keep an eye on the trials to make sure they're progressing well. And if they do continue to go well, then we will put it to, to council in Salford um, that the trial may be extended a little bit further uh, just to get us some, some more insight, uh, especially given that the first six months or so of these trials at least um, is going to be quite significantly impacted by um, the COVID pandemic. I should mention on the maps as well, we do have a number of geofences um, implemented. So they have GPS on board the scooters, which allows us to set low speed zones. So the speed limit across the zones is 12 miles an hour, three miles an hour slower than the DFT limit. Uh, but we also have slow speed zones, which drop it down to six miles an hour. So we'll typically do this in areas where there might be uh, significant pedestrian interactions, if it's a shared use footway, for example, or uh, on the approach to crossings and tram tracks is another area we've done it to make sure that there's enough reaction time for the drivers and the e-scooter users. And there's also no parking zones. So again, the tram tracks example, that's designated as no parking zone. So you're not able to complete a journey um, in that area. Um, the majority of these figures are for Salford because that has uh, been running the longest, but so far we've seen really positive usage, um, especially considering that these schemes are relatively small in comparison to some of the others around the country. So over, over 60,000 trips have now been made by 20,000 unique users um, covering quite a significant distance. Um, and, and I think what's quite important out of that is the average trip distance is around two kilometres. So that shows us that reasonable distance trips are being made. Um, we don't want to replace walking trips, for example, with these scooters. So the fact that it's two kilometres is about what we're targeting. So pretty happy of that at the moment. Um, and so far, we've had um, zero serious incidents as well, which is really promising. Um, in the top right there, last thing to just touch on uh, is 95% parking zone compliance. So the both of these schemes in Greater Manchester, both operated by Lime, um, are virtually docked. So although we don't have any physical infrastructure, you do have to start and end your journeys in a particular uh, parking zone. And that's marked in the map and it's also marked on the ground. So that's how we've been uh, keeping the street clutter down and making sure that these aren't um, strewn across the pavements uh, and avoiding the problems we've had with um, similar schemes in the past in Greater Manchester. Um, so that's an insight into the, the actual usage figures, but a gap in our knowledge has been understanding uh, the attitudes to the scheme from users and non-users, uh, what the reasons for the trips being made are, who's using the service, what the barriers to using the service might be. Um, and, and that's where the University of Salford come in with, with this research, which has now published their interim findings. Um, so I'm really proud at CFGM to be supporting this. Um, it's, it's a significant piece of work for us. Um, to be looking at because uh, it will guide our policy, um, not just in the future, but even in the next 12 months as we try to refine these trials to, to make them uh, bring the most benefit as they can to the local areas as we come out of the pandemic. Uh, so that's a quick overview of the context from GM's point of view, um, and I'll, I'll hand back over. Thank you very much.